Good morning, everybody. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to see you. It is a fabulous Wednesday, and we're here with David's Meet the Biz class. And we've got one of the, one of the, the absolute, okay, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, national treasure, okay. Leave it to Beaver. Starring Barbara Billingsley, Hugh Beaumont, Tony Dow, and Jerry Mathers. And Jerry Mathers. And Jerry Mathers. And Jerry Mathers. And Jerry Mathers as the beaver. As the beaver. Welcome to Meet the Biz. <laughs> Oh my God, I had, I didn't know if that was a Joanne Worley voice or what, it just came out that way. <laughs> Very close. All right, I am, uh, as John said, today we have a, a TV legend, a television legend. He is one of the most recognized characters in history. And um, People Magazine said he is one of the most well-known individuals in television history. Um, we're very lucky to have him here today. I, uh, I, I'm gonna bring him on and then um, we actually have um, our wonderful John Paces will be our co-host today. So it's fun to have a co-host. Um, but as we go on, this man is amazing. He's wonderful. He has an amazing heart. Uh, you could see it in his smile and his eyes. He is an American icon. The beaver himself, Mr. Jerry Mathers. Hello. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. How are you? I'd be better. Uh, it, thank you again for, for, for coming here. I, I remember I met you and your lovely wife with my friend Jerry, Jewel. Uh, at at a party, and then I've seen you, of course, at several different events. But um, to have you here with Performing Arts Studio West, I've been here for I think eight years now. And wow! I, yes, it's been such a blessing to work for this amazing extended family. Uh, I started Meet the Biz back in two thousand and eight, and then we 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 brought that into Performing Arts, and it it just it's, it's a love and a treasure. And I do want to uh, bring on, you know, right away, the, the man who created uh, Performing Arts Studio West, um, who you heard uh, before, and he will be joining us as co-host, Mr. John Paces. Hey, good morning, everybody. Glad to have you with us. And Jerry, so, so thankful that you're with us today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to, uh, to meet with us and chat with us. No problem, John. Yeah. So, gosh, where do we start, David? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you get rolling because you kind of, you know, you got your, 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 your vibe and how you do these things. But, uh, you know, I may jump in at any time and uh, just ask some specific questions. And, and um, you know, well, let's just do this. Let's have fun, you guys. That's what this is, uh, this is all about today. I love it. I love it. Um, I wanted to start, Jerry. I mean, Leave It to Beaver wasn't your first job. As I recall reading, your first job was a milk commercial? Right. When I was two years old, I was doing um, basically uh, all sorts of different things, but one of them was pet milk. And it would go on as an advertisement on live TV. So I came in there and I drank a little milk and said, oh, that's good. And that was it. And so that was the first thing I did. Yeah. What happened was, though, on live TV, because there really wasn't that much film TV, then they may show movies, but there wasn't the big like they have now. Um, once a child worked in front of a big audience, because there was had a live audience and a crew and did it right, you worked all the time. So then I started working all the time. I, I was doing another one of those 
Alfred Hitchcock was doing a movie that he was about to do, and he saw me doing it and hired me for The Trouble with Harry. I worked with two movies with Bob Hope. I just worked all the time. And then in 1957, I was on an interview, and it was a massive interview. They had about 2,000 kids because it was not only in Los Angeles. It was in New York and um, Chicago. And when we got there, we just kind of went, what kind of an interview is this? I mean, there was usually maybe 20, 30 kids for one part. But we didn't know that they were casting for Wally, Beaver, Eddie, Lumpy, all the different characters. So you walk in, I'm thinking, how come I am with this person that's like 18 years old? Well, how are they going to be a friend of mine? But it all turned out great. And Leave it to Beaver is one of the longest running shows in television history. Right. Right. I, I loved looking on your website, too, because I love how it has all of the, you know, you got, I, I was about to buy everything <laughs> on Amazon, the Amazon links and the whole six. What, how many episodes was it? Two hundred and eighty four. Yeah, something like that. We had thirty nine a year for six years. And just think about that, you guys. Now, in context of the way television is done now. You know, you, you got a television season that is that is so shortened, but think about pumping out 39 shows per year. And I'm sure you did those on a one per week schedule, Jerry, if you know. Absolutely. Two, day, two days of rehearsal. One day we Ooh. just went in and read it. And um, actually, that was very easy for me for the first couple of years because I couldn't read it. So they have uh, one of the secretaries <laughs> read my part. And then the next day we'd go in and rehearse everything we could so they could block it and make sure the camera people and the lighting people could set up the lights so they wouldn't have to do it while the actors were there. And the next three days we shot it, took the weekend off and came back on Monday. Wow. Well, wow. now were you were you uh, schooled on set? Did you have a you know an, an on set uh, uh, teacher or were you able to go to, to regular school at the time? I, I wouldn't think so, right? No, oh, absolutely not. No, they they have special teachers that mm -hmm. uh, volunteer basically for it. They're called studio teachers. Mm -hmm. They can teach up to, I think it's eight children. So when you have a thing, when you have more than that, then they have to get a second teacher. But it's a great education. You know, it's the education of the kings and queens of Europe. I mean, you've got a private teacher that's one of the best in the L.A. school system. She's not only a, your teacher, she's also your welfare worker. So she makes sure that if anything is going on, she's always watching you to make sure it's not dangerous. And if there is something that, you know, not right, or she thinks you may be hurt, she'll just walk right across the camera and pull you out. Yeah, there you go. Now, Jerry, let me ask you this. How integrated with, you know, you, know, you obviously, you know, you had a home life, you had your mom and dad. I'm not sure if you had siblings or not. But uh, how much interaction did you have with kids your own age outside of the set? Or was that pretty much, you know, your family? It wasn't a family. I mean, I knew I was working there, um, you know, but they were all the people on the show, like the lighting people, the camera people, everybody, they made sure it was a family person. Um, if there was somebody that, that wasn't, they just didn't hire them. So they all knew kids, basically. I mean, you know, and they knew that, you know, you can't make a child work if all of a sudden they don't want to. They're, there's just, you don't say I'm going to sue you because the kid goes, ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was just, we never had that problem. But, you know, it was just a really fun crew. Um, the makeup man was um, really good. And he did a lot of the different things when I have a black eye or anything. But he was also always building things with me. We built little boats. Um, we built little airplanes. So when I was not going to school on the set, um, I'd go back to him and he'd say, well, what are we going to do today? And we'd look in this little book he had and we'd build it. Ah. Wow. Now, speaking of, speaking of makeup, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't the very first episode, aside from the pilot, obviously, which had, you know, a, a few different people in the cast, in, including, you know, Ward and Wally were played by different actors. But the first episode was the haircut. Was that the very first episode that you guys did? Episode one, season one, where Beaver tries to give himself a haircut and he shaves half his hair off and then Wally tries to fix it and it's an absolute mess and you had to wear stocking caps, you know, at the dinner table? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the very first episode was the alligator episode where oh, okay. right, right, right. Beaver goes to a, a county fair um, he's not his he didn't ask his parents he happened to be walking by and whatever and went to it comes home with an alligator 
Now, his parents had already told him they weren't the, the boys weren't responsible enough to have a any kind of animal because we had wanted a dog. And so we hid it in the toilet, in the upper part of the toilet. We put this alligator and started to raise it so we could prove to our parents, uh, you know, Hugh Beaumont and Barbara Billingsley, June and Ward, that we were responsible enough to keep an animal. But uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to work with, even though it's a baby elephant, I'm an elephant, uh, alligator, it was about probably, you know, 12 inches long. I mean, these were not just little bitty things like that. They that's, were like That's that. a big lizard. That's a big lizard, right? <laughs> big lizard with a lot of teeth. Yeah. <laughs> did you, oh, uh, did he snap at you? <laughs> they all snapped at you because they were not happy um, to be able to, you know, they, they were not in their regular environment. People were picking them up and throwing them in this water and this toilet, and then they darken it by putting the top on. And so um, it was actually the first show, I believe, that ever showed on television a bathroom and a toilet because mm -hmm. those were rules in those days they weren't allowed to be shown so that was one of the things that the people at the sensing bureau censors. Uh, censors said um no you can't show that so what they did is they just showed the very top of the tank with the alligator in it but they couldn't show it to the bowl or any other part of the toilet. <laughs> and, and, you know, and it really, it really is uh, amazing how many scenes were actually shot of the kids in the bathroom there. Like Wally, you know, Wally trying to learn how to shave or, or, you know, cleaning out the bathtub because, because they took a, a bath and it was horribly duty, dirty, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're right about that. It was just, you never saw that on other, on other shows. Wait a minute, we put dirt into the tub so that it would look like a ring so the parents would knew we took a bath so great. oh there you go. so great that sounds like somebody i stayed with in new york but he hadn't cleaned his bathroom in 10 years but that's jerry are, are your memories <laughs> because that's a young age how old were you when you started the show like about, uh seven six seven. Seven. okay yeah. so uh, memories vivid or do they, are they all kind of run together or how, how does that play I'll, I'll give you I'll, I'll give you a little test how much do you remember about being in the first grade almost everything okay tell me all about it <laughs> <laughs> well uh, my, my teacher was uh, was Miss Takahashi uh, I had a, a crush on a girl named uh, Lynn Caldwell who was a, a blonde uh, I, I tried writing yeah, like my blondes huh yeah, yeah. I married a, I married a blonde and uh, uh, let me see. I, you I know about this other blonde? Uh, oh, oh, the other blonde, my ex-wife. Oh, no, no. Okay, well, well, that didn't work out too great. But uh, yeah, so there's a, there's a, a you know a lot of things that I remember. Of course, some are foggy, but uh, you know it's just that you did so many episodes, and I, I just always wondered, you know, how that stuff you know stayed in your head, or if it kind of fades away into you know. Probably the answer to that would be some of the episodes that didn't have. Um, like a, a landmark, when we call it that, um, fade away because if if there wasn't something like the uh, you know we got we brought an alligator home or the Wally got a car or you know the ones that there was something to hang it on was something that I might remember. Some of them were very good episodes, but they just didn't have those you know points that uh, that you really remember them. When I see them, I remember them, of course, and I say, oh yeah, that's really good. Yeah. You know, what, one of the things that I think made the show so successful was the casting, you know, could not have been more brilliant. It could not have been more brilliant, you know, not only from from, you know, you know, Ward and June and, and you guys, but all of the friends, you know, I mean, all of all of the friends were 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 cast so beautifully. And these kids were so talented and even the small parts like Larry Mondello's mom. And you know, just just such eccentric and wonderful characters. And this is something that that was rather rather odd. Richard Deacon, uh, obviously, who who played uh, um, Fred Rutherford, was simultaneously for a couple of years playing Mel Cooley on the Dick Van Dyke Show. And actually, I, actually that kind of was not a, a bad thing. But we would all um, know that he can only come in on certain weeks because if he'd already, you know, said he was going to do this show or the other show, um, we might have to even change scripts because if he was like not a central character, but a uh, had a lot to do in one show and he was working at the other people's uh, you know, stage, we'd lose him. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I, I, don't, I don't recall that, you know, ever seeing that in, in, uh, you, you know, in, in another, you know, series of shows where, you know, people were series, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, a series, not a regular, but a, you know, a, a supporting person that came on intermediately. Uh, so I just thought that was, that was very interesting. Next question. <laughs> Next question. I, actually, we Go do David. have, we do have a question, uh, several questions from the audience. And um, we have someone who I went to school with in high school, and he is from Florida, Mr. Matt Creeks. Here is Matt. Matt. Hello, Matt. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me. Well, look where he is. Okay. I'm in. Hey, hey, yeah, we're sitting out in front, sitting out in front of the uh, Cleaver House. How are you, Mr. Mathers? I couldn't be better. <laughs> it's a it's a honor to talk to you. I, I bet you really didn't realize, as a kid actor, that you were inspiring kids like me to go into the business and 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 at least try anyway. But thank you for that. My question for you is, in night in 1983, I was a tour guide at Universal Studios. And uh, we drove by the Cleaver house every day. And I wondered if you had any stories from, I know that, you know, they use the house as for exterior shots, and then you would go into a soundstage to do the interior shots. Did you have any stories about, uh, you know, working on the Universal lot, maybe friendships that you built with other actors on the lot? Well, I mean, probably the, the, the best one I had was Alfred Hitchcock. Now I had done a, a movie called The Trouble with Harry, um, before I did leave it to Beaver, but he would come on and he would direct a few of the different shows that were more of the, the drama shows um, as series. And he might come in and do like an Alfred Hitchcock Presents and things like that. So, but you know, it was just really fun um, because we had so many odd things on Leave it to Beaver where this happened or that happened. We had a makeup man who was Bob Don, but he was also the makeup man for all the different things any kind of like if the monster movies and everything so i would go up to the lab during lunch and he'd let me help him build different things for other shows and it was really a lot of fun, a lot of fun. What a i bet that was were there were there other actors that you became friends with not really because everybody was on different you know sets so it wasn't like a school where you had you know a person behind you or a person in front of you everybody was on a set there weren't a whole lot of actors that were child actors on uh the universal lot most of the people that were doing series um were adult shows not that they were in any way weird but they were just shows with only adults in them awesome well thank you so much for the time thanks david thank you matt Oh, we, you know who we have now is Shannon Durex. Shannon Hi. is here. Hi, Shannon. Hey, I do have a question for you. Okay. Do I have what an answer? Is, okay. What is your favorite episode of Leave it to Beaver? What was your favorite episode at school? <laughs> <laughs> every, every day was really a lot of fun. We had a great cast and crew so there really wasn't one day i mean every every year we would go and we'd do 39 shows and you become not like a family but you're very bonded to all the people you're working with because i'd go in there at eight in the morning and work till five at night i had to do three hours of school in that time um but you know everybody was very very happy and it was just a fun thing to do well, you know, some of the some of the standouts for me, Jerry, are, are uh, obviously the the infamous beaver falling into the bowl of soup on the uh, on the on the billboard. And for you know what uh, they they'd be glad to hear that because that was the most expensive show we ever did because they had to not only do a soup bowl, but they had to build a billboard because on the back lot of Universal. Obviously, they don't have billboards, so they had to build a regular billboard and then put the soup bowl on it. So that was the most expensive um, Leave it to Beaver we ever did. For the next, I think it was four, it may have been six weeks, we couldn't have any people that weren't regulars on the show that they'd have to pay extra because they had put all their money into the soup bowl and That's the building so, of that thing. That is so funny. And guys, you know, if you haven't seen that episode, there's this big billboard and you know, there's a there's a woman and she's holding this bowl of soup and it's 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 three dimensional. It's not flat. And so there's steam coming out of the bowl of soup. And uh, so Beaver's friends are saying, I bet you there's real soup in there. And Beaver's going, nah, there's not real soup in there. And there's going, sure, there is. Sure, there is. Why don't you climb up there, Beaver, and see? And so he ends up climbing into this thing and falling into the bowl of soup. And then he gets stuck in there and they have to call the fire department. And, you know, Eddie and Wally are all out there. And and uh, 
and they're just going, hey, you know, some some dumb kid fell into a bowl of soup, you know, and it ends up being beaver. And then and then uh, Eddie, you know, once the, once the adults show up, they said some poor unfortunate child fell into a bowl of soup, you know. <laughs> so and just just what a what a classic one that is. And if if I can ask one more thing, there was an episode, Jerry, I think we're we're. There was a, a fair in town and Beaver won a locket at one of the games and he was going to give it to his mom either for, for, for birthday or Mother's Day. And he ends up giving it to a, to a young lady. And the reaction that, that Wally had when Beaver told him that he gave it to a girl, and I know I'm paraphrasing here, but I think the line was something like, Beaver, you gave a girl a locket? He goes, you can't go walking around like you're Frank Sinatra, <laughs> <laughs> giving, giving girls gifts. And, you know, that was one part of the charm of the show, you guys, was the slang that these guys used on a regular basis. And uh, I remember you know, one of my family's very best friends, another cat around my age, he had nephews and he wanted to, to get his nephews to enjoy the show and get into the show. And they said, kids don't talk like that kids never talk like that and he said oh no no back then he goes kids talked exactly like that and i think part of the charm of that and and you can attest to this obviously jerry is that you know joe Connolly and and bob mosher you know they had kids and they based a lot of these situations on their experiences with with their children is that am i do i remembering that correctly Absolutely. In fact, between the two of them, they had eight kids. So they had a lot of, uh, you know, things that their kids would come home and either did or wanted to say, you know what happened to my friend so and so and he got a detention or whatever. And it'd be very odd, but four or five shows later, that was something the Beaver was doing. That's so funny. That is so, funny. so they were all from real life. And isn't that isn't that great? I think I read some somewhere too where you know, they never wanted this show to be about belly laughs. It was more about, oh yeah, chuckling. And I, and I think this, this might've been something that, that, uh, that Tony Dow had said it in, a, in an interview one time. He said, if the, if the jokes were ever too big, they would sometimes cut them out because they didn't want that kind of humor. Absolutely, they, they wanted it to be a show about the kids, but they didn't want things that, you know, were a typical setup jokes where it's set up, set up joke. They wanted the show to flow in a manner where you watched it, you knew every week almost Beaver was going to get in trouble. Wally very seldom got in trouble. And it was a show that kids could watch, but also adults. And they'd say, oh, yeah, I know that because my kid just did that. <laughs> was it was it more challenging as, as you guys started to get, to get a little bit older, to come up with those, you know, for the writers to come up with those situations that were kid-like and charming, because, you know, I, I think uh, Beaver made it to the eighth grade, right, uh, by the end of the season, and while he was graduating from high school and going off to, to college. Um, did you feel that the writing changed a little bit, or was it pretty consistent with regard to the, uh, the, the integrity of what they wanted to, uh, you know, to- uh, I think it was portray? very consistent, and, and the reason being, Joe Conley and Bob Mosier, who were the writers and producers of the show, I think they had either 10 or 11 kids between them. So they had a lot of people to, to draw from. And a lot of the things that happened on the show now, they were very, diff, uh, you know, they were changed, but were kid things that their kids actually did at home. And they said, oh, yeah, and the next, you know, three weeks later, Beaver would be doing it. <laughs> That's so funny. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys you know, get some other questions in here. I'm sure I'll probably end up sticking my face in here again. Oh, I minute, hope but... so, John. You're, the, you're, I mean, you could see that you breathe the show, you, 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 and you're still breathing it. And it, I mean, for all of us, it was just a, an incredible show. And Jerry, you're, you know, I mean, the beaver. Just, we have, we have Katie Harney Johnson here, and she had a couple of questions. Uh, okay. here Hi, Katie. Is. Hi, thank you again for meeting with us. We really appreciate it. So lucky to have you. Oh, it's um, my I, pleasure. My hat well, You've on. got your hat and a green shirt to match it. You're it yeah, yes. very fashionable. Yes, which you can get at the Jerry Mathers Beaver Merch.com. <laughs> right? Nice <laughs> <I> to <laughs> better myself. She's giving you a great plug there, you guys. That's good. <laughs> it is. 
So I had a couple questions. Um, well, one thing I wanted to ask you about is I know that after the Leave It to Beaver series ended, you actually started a band, which was called Beaver and the Trappers. So I wanted to hear a little more about that and how that got started. And also, do you enjoy singing still? I don't do the, the band anymore, but it was a high school band. So we would basically do all sorts of, uh, you know, like sock hops. So I had two friends, actually three friends. One was a drummer and the other one was a, the other two were uh, guitar players. And so we'd go around to all the schools and play sock hops and, you know, proms and things like that. So it was a lot of fun. Um, I don't know how good we really were, but we thought we were great. <laughs> That's great. Um, also, uh, I know that you are really close with your TV brother, Tony Dow, who played Wally. Um, I know he was recently diagnosed with cancer again. He's been in my thoughts. And um, I was just wondering, why do you think it is that the two of you have been able to remain close for so long? Well, you know, um, we were good friends on the set. He wasn't that much, you know, older than me. Um, you know, when there was the pretty girls that he always got to um, take out on the show and I didn't, um, he would always, I, I wouldn't bother him as much. But, you know, when you're on a show for six years and there's like, you know, one other kid on the show or, or an adult almost uh, by the time you ended the show, um, you become very, very good friends. And if you don't, it's not a very happy set to be on. So the writers were very cognizant of that. And, you know, they always made sure that we were all happy. That's nice. Yeah. One more question. Um, One more answer then. <laughs> <laughs> your real life mother, Marilyn, just celebrated her 95th birthday, I believe. And yes. I I saw in an interview that she said she would read your lines with you every night. What was it? Six for six years, I think. So I was just curious. Um, obviously, she had a lot to do with your success. Um, if you have any other stories about your mom. Well, you know, my mom was basically my touchstone because when you're a child, um, you know, you obviously can't go on interviews because, you know, it was a long drive to the studios. Um, it all started because my mom was at a department store um, looking for clothes for me and a lady walked up to her. I was two years old at the time. And she said, is this your little boy? And my mom went, okay, whatever he broke, whatever he did, we'll pay for it. And the lady said, no, but I noticed that he has fit, he fits our clothes almost perfectly we have a fashion show, I think it was every Friday or may have been, I don't even remember that, but maybe over a weekend. And all he'd have to do would be come in, wear three outfits, walk out with a, a model, uh, do maybe a turn, but if he doesn't do it, that's not a big thing. And we would give him an outfit and pay him like, you know, $10. My mom said he could do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, uh, yes. No, I was just going to ask what what was the you know your onset relationship with uh, uh, Hugh Beaumont and Barbara Billingsley? I mean, they were you know obviously you know I I iconic you know television parents. Everybody wanted Ward for a dad. I mean you, you know and uh, and June was always so steady and wonderful. Uh, how was your relationship with you know as as a child and you know them being adults and was it any just any thoughts you might have on that? Well, Hugh was very interesting because not only was he an actor, he is also a Methodist minister. Mm -hmm. And in the early, I guess it would be 50s, maybe late 50s, he was Michael Shane. Michael Shane was, uh, before a movie, they'd have trailers or whatever they called them. And they were just real little short things. They're about 15 to 20 minutes. Michael Shane was this really tough detective that when he wanted to say anything, he'd take somebody and put them up against the wall and go, bam, bam, bam which was not the best thing for a, a minister to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I think when he got the part on Leave it to Beaver and the father, it was much more of him being a minister. Beaver would do something wrong and he'd say, come into the den and he'd have a talk with me. And I think he was much happier than uh, beating people up. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny how, how, how Beaver and Wally, whenever they thought, thought that they were to get in trouble, 
you know, there was always this, there was always this threat of, you know, I hope dad doesn't start hitting us or, you know, you're going to get clobbered now, you know, that kind of a thing. And it never happened because, you know, Ward was so, uh, you know, Ward was so e even keeled. Although there were those times when you would see him just starting to lose his temper and then he would catch himself. It was just so beautifully played. I mean, just what a wonderful cast. He was a great actor. Barbara Billingsley was really good. Um, probably the one that was maybe the best actor on the show was uh, Ken Osmond, who played Eddie Haskell. Because in real life, after he finished Leave it to Beaver, he went on to become a very decorated officer mm -hmm. in the Los Angeles Police Department. He was a motorcycle officer. But how'd you like to be speeding on the freeway or on a street? You see the lights behind you, you go, oh, no, I'll, I'll talk my way out of this. And up walks Eddie Haskell. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, seriously. That's we so have uh, Zuli Johnson now. Zuli. Oh, Zuli. Hi, Zuli. Hi, Hi you. It's so honored to, to meet you. Pleasure to and, talk with you. Oh, thank you. I, and, and leave it to Beaver with your famous hat, your baseball cap. How, um, how many times do you wear the same hat or the different ones on? on your robo, do you wear it at the same time or you have different hats? Funny thing about that hat was when you do a show like Leave it to Beaver, you have a wardrobe person and the wardrobe person, you know, does all your clothes for you. And when we did the very first episode, it was raining out that day. Now we were on a sound stage, so it wasn't like I was out in the rain. But my mom was looking for something so my hair wouldn't be all wet when we got to the studio. And she just saw this green hat that had been up on one of our uh, closets for a while. Um, she didn't really know where it came from, but at least the hat to keep my hair dry. And so she put it on me. And the next thing I knew, they wanted it every week. In fact, the wardrobe man wanted to keep it. And um, they said, no. My mom said, no, that's our hat. Uh, you know, if if you want to buy another one, that's fine. Producer said, no, we like that one. So this poor wardrobe man would watch me every second. If I walked off the set, he always wanted to grab it right away. So, you know, we might go out and play, like throw baseballs or something. He didn't want it to get dirty. So it was like the uh, a big thing. You would have thought it was the queen's gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. Thank you for you. And thank you. Thank you for your good questions. Diane Elizabeth Jordan. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, how are you? You know, believe it or not, my dad, my grandfather, and my great grandfather were Methodist ministers. So when you said that about Mr. Beaumont, I thought, cool. Um, anyway, my question for you is. Um, in the early 80s, they, they brought the cast together to do the new Leave it to Beaver. And what was that experience like? And now you guys are in a brand new decade. It was pre-social media, but so much had happened socially too. So what was that like to kind of revisit a character you had played as a young actor, then revisit him as now he is a father? And what were the differences that you had to portray because you had a different, you were now playing the dad instead of, you know, being the son. So what was that like for you as an actor and a character? Well, you know, it was a lot easier than just walking in and having to play a dad because I'd had a great mentor in Hugh Beaumont, who I had been working with for basically six years before we started the next show. And that was a few years after that. But, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot of things from him about how to be an actor and things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do. But he was uh, a really nice man. What a lot of people don't know about him is the other thing he was besides an actor, he was a Methodist minister. So he was just a really very religious and nice person. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for your question. You know, Jerry, I uh, I also know that um, you were on Broadway, and your Broadway debut uh, of William uh, Wilbur Turnblad in Hairspray. Hairspray. What, what, what was your joy about performing in Hairspray? 
Well, you know, I think uh, as an actor, I've done just about everything you can do. Um, I had my own radio show for several years here in Los Angeles. Um, I've been in movies with some of the top people, Bob Hope, even Marie Saint. I mean, I could go on and on. I've done Leave it to Beaver, which I believe, and some people have told me this, so I don't know if it's true or not, is the longest running show in television history because it's never been off the air since 1957. So, um, it, you know, that's 65 years. How many other shows do you know that have been on every day, not only in this country, but all over the world? So um, 65 years is a long time to do a show, but I'm very, very proud that it's standing up so well. Yeah, it's, it's going through generations through generations. It's Absolutely, and you know, a lot of people say that. As a kid, I watched it, and I want my kids to watch it because I know some of the other stuff that's on, I don't want them to watch. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? And, and you know, I still, I still think it's relevant today because uh, you know, kids are kids. And, um, you know, even though we're talking, you know, a, you know, such a such a, a, a different era, you know, post World War Two Eisenhower era, you know, going into, you know, the early uh, Kennedy, uh, Kennedy years, but the but the the charm and the relationships between between the kids on the show and 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 the adults, you know, is it's it's classic, that kind of that kind of, um, you know, those kind of relationships just just live on. So it's something that's, you know, if you guys haven't seen it, you should really seek it out because it's, it's brilliantly written. The writing is wonderful. The acting is wonderful. The situations were, were all just so charming and funny. Yeah. They seem to take care of you, too. They seem to really um, protect you from the craziness that um, a child star could possibly go through. Um, you know, I had a really good family for being a child star because my dad um, ended up as a superintendent of LA City Schools. But when I was doing Leave it to Beaver, he was uh, a vice principal and then a principal for most of the time. So he was used to dealing with kids. Some of them were not the best kids, but he could, you know, he knew when you did something, if it was, oh, a lot of kids have done that, but you're not supposed to do it again or something that was way over that. So, you know, it was, it was really a good relationship. We have Donna Russo visiting today, the wonderful Donna Russo. There's Donna. Yeah. Hey, Donna. Hey, Hi, Donna. how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing today? Good. I uh, met you actually a while back through an event at the Academy with Conrad Bachman. But anyway, <laughs> I just wanted to say that um, I really enjoy watching uh the classic television and leave it to beaver because in these challenging times it takes me away and i get to you know i i say to myself oh i wonder what's going on in the cleaver household you know and i but get it'll to definitely be it'll away. definitely not be the same things that are going on in the world today <laughs> <laughs> no so it takes me away and it takes me into a household and um it's a delight and you know i do watch other episodes on HBO and Netflix and all that, but it's just, it's refreshing. And I just want you to know that you are um, presenting that freshness to everybody that watches the show in this day and age. And it's very relevant and very, um, and very poignant. You know, so I thank always you. Find that, I always find that very interesting that a, a show that was done in 1957, just about a little boy growing up in America could be so relevant to the kids today because you know the things that happened in 57 they're a little bit different but they're still happening today and i just get so many uh you know people call writing me and telling me that i did that when i was a kid it's just it's just really nice to have such a big fan base that is so dedicated yeah and thank you for making me smile in the midst of um things that are going on that maybe are not so good what you're so pretty you ought to smile all the time <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you don um uh, jerry i heard you're very health conscious and uh you were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at one time um it was it was i owned a catering company um which i was doing studio catering so i would be going out um uh, every day 
and feeding maybe a uh, hundred, maybe 75 people, but it wasn't like a restaurant. A lot of times they're out in the desert, they're here, they're there. So, um, and I would go around and of course, if it's your food, if you're not eating it, they're saying, I wonder why I'm eating his food and, and he's not. So I put on a, a lot of weight and a good friend of mine that's a doctor said, you can't put on that kind of weight. And I said, I feel fine. And so uh, she said, no, come on in. I'll give you a free test. And, you know, she gave me all the different tests and said, you're in big trouble, boy. You better shape up real quick. So I lost about 30 pounds and feel a lot better. And I've been able to keep it off all this time. But, you know, it was just it was unreal how fast all that extra weight came on. And, the, and I didn't realize the damage it would do to my body. Yeah. What do you, what do you say to somebody like me <laughs> who has an addiction to sugar? You know, sugar is not the worst thing, but you know, it, it's not all that good for you. It does a lot of damage sometimes to your teeth. It's, you know, in, in moderation, that's, that's what I learned. All things in moderation. Yeah. Um, you can do a lot of things and, you know, they're just as good without, you know, stuffing yourself. Right, right. Um, what is your biggest joy in life? My family, my kids, my wife. Uh, it's just really nice that I, I can now, after working since I was basically two years old, I've got a lot of free time. Um, I still do uh, autograph shows and different things. And that's fun. You go and see a lot of people. I have um, five grandchildren. Ah. So that's, that's just a blessing. I can go over and under the age of six. And so it's just something that, you know, a lot of people don't have the luxury I have of being able to go over and see them and play with them and then get them all riled up and leave. Oh my God. I just pictured them watch with you watching Beaver and to see their expressions. It might be, it must be fascinating. Yeah, they, they mostly recognize me. I've been there and they say, that's you, that's you. And I get all excited. So, <laughs> you know, and the other only bad part is they say, well, why aren't mommy and daddy on that? <laughs> uh, well, they weren't born yet. <laughs> um, we have some more questions. I know people want to ask questions. So here is a Miss Alexandra Hart. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Alexandra. I, I, I like to ask you, did, did, did you do for do for a long time ago? Say that again, Alexandra. I think did I you think you do for a long time yes. ago. Yes. Well, not a long time ago. What was um, a Broadway I did about four or five years ago? It was really fun. Broadway is a lot of work, though. So I went back there. I was there for about five months. Um, I did hairspray. Um, the, and it was very, very fun. I had done a lot of theater work um, that most people don't know about because it's theater and it's not like a TV show that goes all over the country. So it wasn't like it was a big thing for me to do Broadway. I mean, it was a big thing, but it wasn't scary at all because I'd done a lot of little theater and in theater where I traveled all over the country doing different shows. So it was just a lot of fun, a lot of nice people. Uh, I'd go out and sign autographs sometimes for maybe an hour after the show. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to do. Okay, and I have one last question. Okay. Um, um, do you have any these um, ancestors or, or descendants? Who um served in the military or not? Well, my dad was a uh, colonel in the Air Force. My grandfathers were lieutenants, and one was a captain. I was in the uh, Air National Guard and was a sergeant in the Air National Guard. So we have a, a military family, and my son was in the Navy. So. Uh, we all did our, our duty and came back uh, all in one piece, which was a good thing. Yay, that is a, a very rare, rare coincidence. Because, because my dad's side of the, of the family so to, in, the, in the Navy. In the Navy. Well, good for you, Alexander. That's great. What an, that's a good question. Very, very, uh, very, very well done. Sweetie. Yeah. Good job, sweetie. Um, you know, I, I mean, we, we talk about Beaver, 
all the time, but the, I mean, I, I'm reading the list of shows and I have seen you on a lot of these shows, Saturday Night Live, The Love Boat, Married with Children, Ozzy and Heron, uh, the Batman, and then of course the movies that you, you talked about and Back to the Beach and commercials. I mean, you're, the list is just out there. Do you have oh. a favorite, a favorite um, experience of one of those? No, but when you've been doing it since you were two years old, um, it, uh, quite a few things can pop up and, you know, it's always been fun. I've never had a time where I said, I'm never going to do this again, or I don't want to do this. When you go on a set, there's a great amount of people, but they're all very, very friendly. You know, the director says, do this. It's really simple. And everybody says, oh, that was great. Pat you on the back. And, you know, what could be better? Right. Right. Um, Jer Jerry, just w one real quick one. You know, I, I was just thinking as being a being a kid myself that sometimes you get a crush on a, a, a on a teacher, you know, if you had a pretty teacher. And I was just thinking of the uh, uh, of, of Miss Landers and what, wondering if you had a had a little crush on Miss Landers when you were growing up. Well, you know, it wasn't a crush. I knew that she was a, a fellow actress um, and we were very, very good friends, you know, because we had a lot of scenes that we did together. So we ran a lot of lines together. I honestly didn't really have a, a crush on her. There were a lot of other girls I did, but I knew that she was nowhere near my age. So, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, a something that just wasn't going to happen. <laughs> there, there was that wonderful episode where you're, uh, where Ward and, and June invite Miss Landers over over to dinner, and she wears open toed shoes. <laughs> and, and she oh, had toes. <laughs> and the, the, the kids are all up in a tree, and they're looking down on the back patio, just going, "Look, Beaver, toes." <laughs> Oh my God, that killed me. I thought that was so charming and funny. <laughs> Thank you. We have Danny McNett now. Danny McNett. Danny. Uh, we only see the top of your head. So, well, and your cartoon. <laughs> you said and everything that actually you had a radio career. I remember uh, uh, KWIZ, wasn't it? Wasn't it uh, KWIZ? KZEY. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was a it was a immediate middle of the road rock station as a station at that time. Now it's a Mexican station, <laughs> and and uh, I was uh, I was going to go over. Uh, go over and meet you in person and, and I, I mean I remember clearly uh, 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 clearly and I and I actually thought it was a big deal you know but something happened happened that 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 actually you know interrupted my schedule and then I, uh, schedule I don't remember what it was now because it's many years later uh, uh, you know so i remember collecting the picture after the fact I, I never got to see you see you or anything like that and 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 everything i don't i actually i actually do not have the picture today uh, today and everything maybe you can send me one <laughs> Well, you know what, Danny? You got a picture right now on Zoom with him. Really? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's going to know that you that you met him. There you go. He did better, <laughs> both of us. Yes. Thank you, Danny. That was great. Uh, we have Mark Pulver. Mark Pulver is here. Uh, yes. Can uh, David? Can you hear me loud and clear? Am I unmuted? We can hear We're you. Unmuted, loud and clear. I can hear you too, so be careful. Okay. <laughs> uh, Jerry Mather, I still feel like I'm in a lucid dream because I always wanted to somehow uh, meet you. I'm from Miami, Florida, and you actually came there at a convention like sometime in the 80s, and I came out there perfectly see finding a needle in the haystack my question is uh when you got uh how did you get uh the uh the job on set and when you were were you nervous when you were auditioning for the part of leave it to beaver were you nervous no, i wasn't nervous um 
I started working as an actor at two years old. I started doing live TV. So before I did Leave it to Beaver, I had done probably eight to 10 movies, a lot of live television. And people always think it was only Leave it to Beaver, but a lot of those things there was no copy of. So you went in, you did it, you got paid, and you moved on to the next show. So Leave it to Beaver is one of the longest, and some people say is the longest running show in television history, because it's never been off the air since 1957. It plays in about, or has played in about 32 languages all over the world. So a lot of places that would never know what a boy in America would be like, that's what they learned from Leave it to Beaver, what life was like. Of course, it was in the 50s and early 60s uh, for a boy in the United States. Well, I, I rushed home every day after school for like as back years that I could remember to turn on the... Uh, to turn on to turn on the tube uh, channel 12 in West Palm Beach just to see you guys you know and I did not want to miss one second of it in fact I came an hour half hour at this waiting by the TV to uh, to see you guys and just so disappointed when the show ended and it's just like well I gotta wait tomorrow to see you guys uh, again and I really still even to this day, I love watching you guys. It just brings me right back into time. That is a time machine watching you guys back in the uh, 50s. Your mother was just always all dulled up, looking beautiful as ever. Your father sophisticated, walking in with a briefcase. He knew exactly what to say at the uh, at every minute of, of the day. You know what what he needed to do as a father. A dream that I had to have parents li uh, like yours. Really, really love the show, guys. I really do. And thank you uh, for speaking with me, Jerry. Well, thank you, uh, Mark, for being such a dedicated fan. And you know what? I probably had more fun doing it than you had watching it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Thanks again, Jerry. My pleasure. Thank you for calling in. I tell you, some of this is making me tear up. It just It brings back the memories of such a good time. Um, and uh, we have to, and it helps us. It helps us find a good time in this moment as well and realize the good moments that we have. Hey, uh, real quick, Jerry, do you have, I mean, have, did you collect any, you know, memorabilia from, from shows or anything, you know, as a, as a kid? Did, you know, say like a, there was that episode where, where uh, you and all your friends got the, the sweatshirts with the ugly faces on them and, and that type of thing. And you all wanted to wear them to school. And of course you were the only one who did and got in trouble for it. Uh, but did you collect stuff like that? If it was saying, Oh, here's a, here's a prop or here's something we know we're not going to use again. Would you take something like that home from time to time? No, but the one thing I did take home and they weren't really all that happy about it because when we, when we finished leave it to Beaver, they weren't sure it wasn't coming ah. back for another season was the hat, the baseball cap, because the day that I went for the interview, it was raining, and so they could never find another hat, so mm -hmm. that was always the poor wardrobe man would be chasing me around to make sure I didn't lose that hat. Hey, what, what, what was one of your dreams in your life that you manifested? Something that you always wanted, and you went... Having a happy marriage. Oh. Here, here's my wife. <laughs> Bring her right in. That this is why I'm so happy. Hey, how are you? That's good. Teresa. I'm good. Yeah, Hi, Teresa. We, we're doing great together. So yeah, yeah. Whenever I see the two of you together, it's you know you can see it's one big love. Yep, it is. We're a good match. Very good. You're very lucky, you guys. Good for you. What do you want the most at this moment in your life? Which one are you speaking, me? Yeah, both of you. Well, for me, I'm very happy. So if life were to just continue on the same track, I will be a very happy man. Yep. How about you, Teresa? Oh, really the same. Um, we're just so grateful to have wonderful grandkids and great kids. Um, and this is a dream come true for me to meet somebody like Jerry. We've been married 11 years. So... Um, I have a lot of experience behind the camera. So, you know, I said, well, I used to help create 
coordination for red carpets and now I get to walk down them. <laughs> so it's a pretty, pretty exciting life. And we're very happy. We, we're, we're very happy home bodies and yeah, we meet so many like nice people like yourselves and the incredible fans. I do all his social media and the outpouring like you guys of the love and the respect for the show and the devotion is just really unbelievable. And it's really, it's, it's so heartwarming and it really has made a difference in so many people's lives. So that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful thing. thing for you to be able to know that and live that. Well, um, thank you so much uh, for coming today. John, any, any last questions or thoughts or anything? No, you, you know what? If, if, if Leave it to Beaver had not existed, it would have been a sadder world. Let's put it that way. Oh, thank just, you very much. It was just, it, it's just so charming and even stood out, of, you know, among the, the, the shows of that time, the other family shows. I mean, you, you take a look at, uh, you know, Father Knows Best or Ozzie and Harry or something and just like, you know, yeah. And then Leave to Beaver was up here just because, and I think it was all about, it was all about the writing and the casting and how good you guys were as, as, as actors. I mean, never a fake moment. It was, a, it was the perfect kind of meshing because, the two writers behind, between them, Joe Conley and Bob Mosier, had eight kids. So they really knew a lot about bringing up, especially boys, because I don't think they had many girls among those eight. And so it was just a really fun cast. You know, they made sure that not only all the people um, like Barbara and Hugh had family, but all the people on our set, the, the makeup man, the crew, all were people that had family. So when we had kids on the set, they were, we, we didn't drive them that crazy. Right, right. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Jerry, so much. And Teresa, wonderful to meet you. Just a, just absolutely the best to have you guys with us today. So thank you again. Thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure you. talking with you. What's your name? Theodore, but my friends call me Beaver. Well, may I call you Beaver? I'd like you to be my friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>